Imagine you had a long night last night, and you're about to take a break and head to the coffee shop. Now, before you can get your hands on your triple venti soy no foam latte, you need to figure out how you're going to get there. Are you going to take a bus? Are you going to drive there? What's the speed limit? How about the address of the coffee shop? You need to know all of these things to get there efficiently. If you were to build a sort of roadmap containing all of this information, it might look something like this. This is a wiring diagram. It has all of the information we just talked about, except it all relates to computers and electronics. Wiring diagrams are found on all NOAA vessels and are used as a sort of roadmap for all of the hydro equipment on board. Addresses, modes of transportation, and speed limits become IP addresses, cabling, and protocols. Now, I'm going to assume that you don't really know anything about these things. And that's totally okay. It might take us a few modules, but I'd like us all to get to the point where we can use these diagrams to troubleshoot and understand our particular vessels, which is a hugely important skill. So, where do we start? Well, let's start with the obvious, computers. See, we need to understand the basic inner workings of a computer. Computers are like the people in our roadmap analogy. They handle communication and decision making based on inputs and outputs. We can do these things because we have all of the following things. A brain for thinking, hands for interacting with things, a skeleton for a basic structure, eyes for seeing, ears for hearing, and a mouth for interacting with other people. Computers are composed of basically the same elements. Let's go through those elements next. Let's start with the skeleton. The motherboard is basically the skeleton of a computer. All of the things we talk about from here on out basically plug into the motherboard. It also provides what are called buses, which are little wires printed into the board that are used for communication between the different slots and ports everything else uses. The CPU, or central processing unit, is the brain of the computer. Some people call this the processor, or microprocessor. If you asked the computer to tell you what 3 plus 5 equals, the CPU would do the math. Or, to give you a better example, when you run a routine in Keras, it is the CPU that is running processes and works with the data. But the CPU can't remember anything for very long, so you need to have something else to store those numbers. In computer terms, that something would be memory. Computers have two kinds of memory, active and passive. RAM, or random access memory, is your active memory and is much like our short-term memory. It requires power and only lasts a short while. So if your computer loses power or you pull the RAM out of your computer, much like how you forgot where you put your car keys last night, you will lose what is in your RAM. The upside is that RAM is fast, so if you want more fast memory, you want more RAM. As a final note, RAM isn't something you can save files to. It is managed by the computer and is basically invisible to your day-to-day -day operations. Hard disk drives, or just hard drives, are your passive memory. These represent your long-term memory and are the storage that you actually access. The C drive on your computer is generally your hard drive. This is slow memory, but you can easily get a lot out of it so you will almost always have more hard drive memory than RAM. If I pulled the hard drive out of your computer right now, you might lose the stuff you're working on, but you should have most of the memory in there intact. Now, let's talk about your eyes and ears. Not only do we have webcams and microphones in our laptops these days, but computers must also provide video and sound to the user. These elements are generally built into the motherboard but you can buy fancy video and sound cards if you deal with more video and sound data. We sometimes buy fancy video cards, which help when we visualize and process complex three-dimensional point cloud data. Just like how people use their mouths for communication with each other, computers communicate via a network interface card, or NIC. The NIC transmits messages from the computer to other computers over ethernet cables. Messages can be in a number of different languages or protocols, like FTP for file sharing or HTTP for data communication over the internet. Of note here is that the NICs also support different speed. The most common speed you'll find these days is gigabit ethernet, 
which lets you transmit a billion bits per second or 125 megabytes per second. There are other means of communication that you might see, such as serial, parallel, and USB. These are a little bit different from each other and from Ethernet. We'll need to have a basic idea as to how they work as the configuration changes a bit depending on which one we choose. We'll be talking more about that later. For now, just keep in mind that whether you are using a USB drive or a serial cable to your POSMV, it's all just communication. Okay, I want to finish up with the hands, which I like to think of as the computer's input-output or I.O. devices. Things like the computer mouse, keyboard, joysticks, and touchscreens are all I.O. devices. These all plug into the motherboard and provide you with a way to communicate what you want the computer to do. Kind of like how you can use your hands to write a message down or point in a direction to tell someone to go do something. And that's my five minute explanation of computers. There's a whole lot more to it than just that, but I really just want us to get the basic concepts down. In order to get to wiring diagram mastery, we still need to talk about cabling, protocols, addressing, and some specific hydro topics that I think we need to understand first. All of that in the next modules. Thanks for watching, and good luck out there.